The United States and the Republic of Korea initiated their largest military exercises ever off the coast of the Korean Peninsula. The Democratic People's Republic of Korea considers it a threat, not a drill, and says it will counter with nuclear strikes against them. But experts doubt the DPRK has the capability to carry out such an attack. CCTV's Sean Calebs is in our Washington newsroom with more. Sean. Elaine, thanks very much. And first, we should point out these joint military exercises between South Korea and the United States are an annual event. Tens of thousands of forces near the DPRK uh, coast always makes for a tense affair. But this year, the region is a powder keg, and the rhetoric is flying fast and furious. It's the largest joint military drill ever between the United States and the Republic of Korea. The maneuvers will involve some 300,000 South Korean forces, coupled with 17,000 U.S. troops, and a whole lot of U.S. military hardware. With regional tensions already high, the DPRK's response was quick. We will launch an all-out offensive to decisively counter the U.S. and its followers' hysterical nuclear war moves. Pyongyang vowed what its leaders called indiscriminate nuclear strikes on U.S. and South Korea to turn U.S. military bases into seas of flames and ash. The U.S. said it notified the DPRK's leadership ahead of operations and stressed the military maneuvers are just drills. But the ROK's media says they're also practice runs for precision attacks against the DPRK's top leadership and its nuclear capability in the event of a war. Given the already elevated tension in the region, China's foreign minister, Wang Yi, is hoping cooler heads prevail. All parties must make joint efforts towards maintaining the stability of the peninsula and should not take actions that would only derail the solution process. Kim Jong-un's government is already paying a high price for its most recent nuclear test and rocket launch. While China agreed to punishing U.N. sanctions against the DPRK for these actions, Beijing wants to bring all sides back to the negotiating table in an effort to stabilize the region. At the moment, the situation on the Korean Peninsula is complicated and sensitive, and we hope relevant parties can keep calm and use restraint without taking actions that can further escalate tensions. The joint exercises, called Key Resolve and Full Eagle, are annual events. But these operations are nearly twice as large as last year's, involving a U.S. nuclear aircraft carrier, nuclear sub, and B-2 bomber. Our experts don't believe the DPRK has the ability to launch long-range nuclear strikes, but they do believe the country has crude nuclear devices. While China and other nations would like to de-escalate tensions quickly, the joint U.S.-South Korean field exercises will be underway for nearly two months. Elaine? Um, Sean, there's been new friction between both sides with accusations of hacking. What more can you tell us about that? Well, I can tell you this annual event, this annual military exercise really uh, does inflame tensions between the DPRK and the Republic of Korea every year. In fact, it's led to bloodshed uh, in some years past. This year, however, Pyongyang is accusing uh, actually, uh, South Korea is accusing Pyongyang of reaching out and trying to tap into their military websites as well as tap into their cell phones, cyber espionage. There have always been accusations back and forth. And as I mentioned, there's this is really a two-prong uh, uh, exercise. One, the field exercises, which go on till the end of April. The other is going to be a computer simulation, and that only goes on until the 18th of this month. So that could possibly have been what uh, Pyongyang was trying to tap into, if indeed it was doing anything at all. Expect the accusations to go back and forth and expect a couple of months of relatively high tension in that region. All right, CCTV Sean Caleb's. Thanks.